One of the biggest challenges I have with health span is I don't think that, that we have great ways of describing this in medicine. I, I think there's several issues with it. The first is um, our definitions, I think, are not wonderful, right? We talk about freedom from disability and disease, but that doesn't really capture it. I, I can tell you a lot of people who don't qualify for having disability or disease, but their health span is still poor. And by the way, this gets this completely excludes a very important element of health span, which I think is emotional health. So let's put that aside because it's not particularly age dependent and it's it's outside of the purview of what we're talking about today. But if you just limit it to physical and cognitive, in fact, if you just limit it to physical, right, you can you can have people who can still carry on activities of daily living, but one of them has a VO2 max of 50 mils per minute per kg, and the other is 30 mils per minute per kg. By the way, neither of those people would ever qualify as disabled because whether you're at 30 or 50 in VO2 max, you can still do any activity of daily living. But one of those people can clearly get more out of life, right? You can take someone who can, you know, uh, has the grip strength to hang on to a bar for 30 seconds versus hang on to a bar for two minutes. Both of those people will see no immediate difference in their day-to-day -day activities, but one person can do far more should they choose to. Well, you know, one person can sit on the floor for half an hour and play with kids and feel nothing. Another person, their back will ache for the rest of the day. Neither of those people are debilitated or disabled and therefore health by health span you know by traditional health span metrics they're both equal but they're nowhere near equal and so that's problem one that i have with the way we as a community talk about health span the second thing is nothing that you or i learned in our medical training even remotely prepares us for how to help people be truly stronger late in life I, it just it just wasn't part of our training, right? Like th there's nothing about that. So um, it, it, it uh, I guess my point here is it's hard for me to really interpret the data and get at something I'm very interested in, which is do centenarians truly have better health span or are they just dying later? And, you know, for the most part, they have this period of compressed morbidity, so it looks like they have better health span. But do we really know that, I mean, I think they do I, based on the literature. Like I think a 90 year old who will become a centenarian is functioning more like a 70 year old who will not. Um, but it's still very difficult to quantify. I don't think we have great metrics here. Do you, do you disagree with me? No, I, I don't think that health span is well defined, um, definitely. But there, so there, so there are two comments that I will make. Um, for the NIH, right back to Tay, uh, for them, what is aging is if we can prevent diseases. That's mm. their measurements, right? Uh, which, which, uh, which, which, which is not satisfying, not to geriatrician and not to physician. Okay, but that's how you get drug approved. For the economist, there are two issues. One is uh, what we're counting as the the cost of medical co the medical cost of the last two years of life. By the mm. way, in centenarians, the CDC has data in centenarians. The, the last two years life are third the cost in 100 years old than in when you die in 70, okay? Oh, that is fascinating. I mean, yeah. to me, that is something that speaks to what we're really aspiring to. And, and, and actually that statistic capture, captures much more about the quality of a person's life. Right, but, but the David, uh, 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 sorry, Andrew Scott, had yeah. a paper in Nature. I think I, I sent I read you it. guys, yes, right? Yes, you sent it to me, yep. And he describes an economical term that's called the value. And by the way, it's very hard. If you want to know more about this paper, we should talk. It's it. I had to sit with him in order to understand what he was saying, but basically saying, hey, if you increase the health span of someone, it's not only medical cost, because this guy is going to travel and spend money traveling and buy gadgets and buy houses for his kids, you know, 
it's yep. going to be their value of the person life is going to be increased and all of a sudden and some of those people by the way are going to still work uh, exactly ra yeah. right they're not and, and just so, playing golf right yeah. so the, the economical value is 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 huge this podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.